Hi, thank you for tuning in to The Shagadelic Show. Today, the Pharaoh will interview John McRae from Cake. Every Thursday at 10 p.m. Hawaii time, you can listen to The Shagadelic Show at kkcr.org. You can also download podcasts for free to listen to on your iPod at your convenience at www.theshagadelicshow.posteras.com. I'm a DJ here, obviously, and I just got your uh, CD, Showroom of Compassion, man. And I must say, man, it kicks ass. Oh, thank you very much. We, we, uh, we're we proud of it. Um, we uh, released it on our own label, which we, we thought wouldn't work out because, uh, well, you know, it's we thought we'd be squashed like a bug. But luckily, we're getting all kinds of support, so it's really pretty, pretty, uh, it reaffirms my uh, faith and and my common man. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so it hit in like the top billboard and all. I mean, did you guys think it was going to go that far? You know, no, not at all. No, <laughs> no. I mean, again, we thought we'd be squashed like a bug. Um, we, uh, you know, the, it's a pretty, I mean, in our experience, music industry can be pretty sketchy and a lot of times it can be about relationships and not music. We didn't really think we'd be on late night talk shows ever again, um, but for some reason we've been able to, uh, you know, continue our career this way. Um, it's actually sort of uh, coming full circle in a way. Uh, we released our very first album, um, Motor Crave Generosity, on our own label, um, and then that was picked up by uh, by another label. But um, so it's kind of coming back to the way we started things, and um, honestly, we didn't really expect um, too much too much success with it. But we, well, we we felt like the alternatives were worse. Right. And your new record label is Upbeat Records, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we're we're working with ILG uh, for distribution, so we do have good distribution, and uh, uh, you know that really helps a lot. Okay, and. Another thing with I found really striking and interesting about the new CD is is uh, all uh, produced on solar power, correct? Correct. Yeah, we're uh, you know we're, we're we're here in Northern California. Um, we found out that Germany uh, is the number one producer of solar electricity in the world. Um, and I don't know if any of you have been to Germany, but Germany is pretty cloudy most of the time. And we certainly have visited Germany, and every time we're there, it's pretty cloudy. And so we just thought it was unconscionable. Uh, being here in Northern California to 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 not have uh, solar panels, uh, and it you know people say oh it makes sense you know you it, you pay for the panels uh, the panels pay for themselves within ten years, but that's only if uh, that's only if uh, energy becomes uh, sort of stays at the same uh, uh, cost. But if 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 my sources are right, um, energy is going to get more expensive. Uh, right. Rather quickly, so it seems like a seems like a practical thing for us to do. Yeah, definitely. I mean, shoot, and plus, you know, times are tight. You know, money's real. You know, not everyone's got as much as they got back in the day. You know, <laughs> right. So we thought instead of taking a trip to Europe, uh, we would spend the money on you know uh, investing in our future. And um, and honestly, it's as the as the value of recorded music descends into into zero. Um, we still get a check from our public utility every month, so um, you know for like twenty five dollars. But still, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it helps. You, yeah, every little bit helps, definitely. Um, so, I wanted to also speak to you about a couple songs. And right now, this is uh, John. I'm speaking with, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so me, my friends, and I. There's a couple of songs that we like totally dig off the new album. And I actually, to be honest, I love the whole album. But uh, so a couple ones that come to mind are Mustache Man, that guitar lick in the beginning, and that trumpet man is off the hook. Cool, glad you like it. Well, yeah, what, we're, we're we're we like playing that song. What uh, what's what's the the lyrics? Um, well, how did you come up I hate with to everything? explain them too much, but I okay, mean it, that's okay. I can say generally that um, you know, having grown up in in Northern California, and you know, just um. There's just a sort of a weird, sleazy, mustache, um, van conversion culture that scared the hell out of me, and uh, I sort of wrote a song about that. Okay. 
That's cool. Yeah, that's what I was reading online. I looked at some of the like the posts and stuff, and it mentioned a couple things about that. And yeah, I found it very interesting, man. It's a great jam, and I also really enjoyed um, "Easy to Crash." How you start off with the synthesizer and the cool little guitar lick. Uh, the teenage pregnancy, man, that's awesome. The, with the slow piano and the trumpet and guitar. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're you know we um, we're using a lot more piano. We for a long time avoided it because we thought it sounded classy. And uh, we didn't want to sound classy, but um, we found an old junker and we hauled it into the studio, and it seems like a good sound for us. Oh, it's awesome sound! Is it is it uh, DeFore that's playing the piano, or actually it's me? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm playing the, on that song, uh, Teenage Pregnancy. That's that's me. Okay, yeah, that's a great little jam. I love how it starts instrumental, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Vincent DeFore plays trumpet on that one. Okay, he's just yeah. on the trumpet on but that. He, one. he does play piano on other songs. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. And then, um, so currently with your touring right now, I know you have a bunch of Cali dates coming up. You got a bunch at the Fillmore. Yeah, yeah. We decided to play smaller venues uh, and multiple nights uh, just to sort of, I don't know, have a better experience for ourselves, I guess, um, and also for the audience. Um, I think it's just all around easier, an easier experience. It does, it does. Um, Take more time and it costs us more more money, um, but it's better. Uh, it's it's easier. It's it's better musically, I think. Right. Well, yeah, everyone's psyched about the tour. I'm gonna try to get um, myself back to the mainland. Definitely catch you guys on a show, man, because I've never actually seen you guys, but I've always wanted to. Been listening since the '90s, 26, man. So I hope to catch your tour. Very excited. Cool. Um, well, glad you can do that. Yo, yeah, it might be my pleasure, man. Love to catch some great live music. And then, uh, are you guys headlining or participating in any music festivals this summer? I think I saw something about it, right? Um, well, we're not sure what exactly we're doing this summer, right? We're, we might play festivals um, in, in Europe, and we might play some festivals here in the States. We're trying to decide. We may do both, uh, but we don't really have our summer figured out yet, so... If somebody's announcing something, they're they're doing it without our permission. Okay, yeah, no, I was just reading some things online. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure. I didn't know if you guys had fully been okay. Well, that happens a lot, actually. You'd be surprised how many times um, people announce stuff that we're doing stuff uh, without actually talking to us first. Okay, <laughs> it's really common. It's weird. Okay. Sorry to hear that. It must be very frustrating. It's a little weird because people get all disappointed. They're like, oh, you, you guys said you were going to come here, and you never did. I think that's why they do it. I think they, they do it to sort of, like, lasso you into something. Right, okay. <laughs> well, it so, happens all the time. It's weird. That is odd. That is, yeah, that's crazy people out there, man. Or, or promoters, whatever. Right, right. Same thing. Yeah. And Sometimes. Then, okay. And I was going to uh, – oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something? Oh, no, no, no. That's good. Um, so I don't know if, you know, if you can go into this also, but I was going to ask, uh, you know, ever since I've been listening to the nineties, you know, fashion nugget and all that stuff, like we were always wondering if you can tell us, how did you come up with the name cake for your band? I mean, classic name, original. Uh, um, uh, you know, I think that it mostly is about the phonetics of the word, uh, just the, it has all the phonetic punch of, uh, words like shit or fuck. I'm not live on the air, am I? No, you're not. So go you ahead and say those out. we can but, say you know, fuck it all has we want. Like the phonetic push and and sort of decisiveness of a lot of bad words that that are really great sounding words, uh-huh. um, without necessarily the 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 baggage of of those words. And um, uh, you know, and that that Marie Antoinette talked about cake. Uh, I think is just an added bonus, but it wasn't really um, it wasn't really the main thing for us mostly it was just about the that it was a four-letter word it looked good on a flyer we used to make our own posters and i don't know i, I think it was just an aesthetic thing okay cool <laughs> yeah like, well it stuck with you guys good and you know everyone it, lo- yeah oh, well we weren't thinking uh just for the record we weren't thinking about birthday cake okay we were actually thinking about the verb um cake like to, to if uh if you have uh uh 